Around 5 a.m. this morning, a fire engulfed Ode. The damage is extensive, and we're having to close our doors for the foreseeable future. After we burned down, we sat with the insurance people and the builders. They said, you'll be back up and running in three months. And then uh, we got pushed back, and then pushed back, and then pushed back. It was about a week off an entire year of closure. I called council, told them I'm gonna chain myself to the building if they don't give me consent, and it came through. <laughs> The menu, I consider it like my first album. A lot of people can make uh, LPs, EPs, mixtapes, and, and each song is its own song, and then you'll come out with an album, and that's one consecutive story on one disc. And that's what this was like for me. It tells the past year of my life. It tells the past year of our lives. And each dish is, is in chronological order and represents physically what was going on at the time. First is Lights Out. Lights Out is, is a dish that represents what, what it looked like and what it felt like to walk in the day after that fire. On top is the physical, like what it actually looked like and underneath is the emotions that went with it. So from the bottom up, we have a black garlic and vinegar puree and it's bitter because it was a, it was a bitter day. And then on top of that, we have burnt, obviously things were burnt. So I have some charred yams. On top of that, we have sweet and warm because the community of Wanaka just reached out in so many ways to help us. So many offerings and, and so many kind words and advice just to try help us get through. And that's a cauliflower puree. And then on top is, is the physical just looks like a pile of ashes. That's your first course. It just looks like a pile of ashes. It looks very unappetizing. No one wants to eat a black pile of ashes. <laughs> Beaten up but not dead yet, which is about when I went on the Phoenix tour. I reached out to friends and reached out on Instagram uh, saying I wanted to do a tour of the bottom of the South Island to the top of the North Island, doing collaboration dinners with other chefs and restaurants and, and a few pop-ups. It was a dish that was on the menu when we burnt down. It's a crowd favorite. And I decided that that was like the hit single would take with us. I got a new respect for, for artists that tour because it's exhausting. So what we have is uh, cylindrical beets from Paul's farm out in Harware. Some we, we salt bake and then scoop out the inside and we puree it and then we set it and we puree it again. It comes ultra smooth puree. And inside there I have an aged balsamic gel. So I figured out how to turn vinegars into gels. So we've got an aged balsamic gel for acidity. Then I have confit beets. So I confit some beetroots uh, and a sunflower and beetroot oil. The walnut from Wilhelmina Van Riel's tree out in Luggett. It's a 130 year old walnut tree and every year she gives us a couple sacks of walnuts. I got puffed Millmore Downs pearl barley. That's like, uh, that's what honey puffs were. And we just make our own honey puff super crunchy really and sprinkle it over the top. And then we've got a, a goat's cheese mousse. So I use cranky goat's cheese from Nelson and I, and I whip it together and put it in a nitrous gun and it comes out super aerated and, and delicious, like whipped goat's cheese. This dish is all white components. White out is about when we're about nine months in. If we reached 12 months of closure, that's indemnity period. Basically uh, walk away and take a paycheck. We didn't know if we were ever gonna open again. Council kept putting us through more consent processes and so it felt like a whiteout. That's why I called the dish whiteout. We do a gravity fishing 
tata. I never say what type of fish I'm gonna use because I don't wanna influence people to use it. So we say gravity fishing tata. So if anyone's inspired, they're gonna be inspired to go straight to Nate. You know, like every fisherman needs to get down with the way Nate's doing things because he's truly sustainable. He's truly caring about our kaimoana and our, and, and our children's future seafood. The white parts of a spring onion, spring onions from Paul's farm in Hawe, and they're soaked in alkaline water to take that harshness out and then drained, that's on the bottom. And then I just dice up the fish from Nate into a tartar, tossing a bit of olive oil and salt on top. And then it gets a rice wine vinegar gel for acidity. And then it gets a hand whipped mayonnaise over the top. Some cucumbers from, from pirate produce out in Hawe that we pickled last summer. And now we're slicing thinly and layering it over that fish for a bit of crunch and acidity. And then over the top is just one big white puffed rice shard. And I use organic jasmine rice and that's just placed whole over the top. I'm not gonna give away the secrets to that technique because I had to work hard for that one. Celebration is, uh, is about when we got consent, finally, and Kala came back to the mine. It disappeared into the Catlins to write a menu. And it just needed to be a dish of color, of, of, of technique and color. Um, and once I had plated the dish, I looked at it and, and it reminded me of like, if someone had got a party popper full of ingredients and techniques and just popped it onto a plate, bam. It's old school now, but most people down here when they see it, they're like, wow, that's crazy next level plating because it comes from that era when we done lots of dots and pieces here and garnishes there and there. It's my one dish on the menu like that. And I kind of had to do it that way to show all of the colors. I couldn't cover it all up. What we do is we make a Gouda custard uh, with Gouda from Caracas. And I get wild shot wallaby because we only serve wild shot game at home. So we get wallaby fillet, I marinate it in olive oil, and then once it's done marinating, I just sear it quickly on the outside, serve it rare, medium rare. And I make a, a, a beetroot mayonnaise for pink. It's, it's, it's nice, the mayonnaise suits the dish really well, but it's more for the color. Then I've got a white wine vinegar gel that I just dot on that for acidity. And then we have the yam chips. It was Jerusalem artichoke chips, and now it's yam chips. And they're just sliced thin and fried, and that's the crunch. We have some miner's lettuce, and that's us foraging. A lot of what built Odin in the early days was foraging. So that pays homage to our foraging, and that's, that, that grows around Lake Howe. And that's, that's celebration. Ode One was like a like an old Mazda Familiar turbo with a it's a new paint job and cool wheels, but you know that's what it was. The new Ode is like a Ferrari. Everything's new. Everything's slick. Everything's working how it should. Nothing's breaking down. You know the old Mazda is always going to break down. It's done two hundred ninety thousand kilometers, but. We're in a Ferrari that just came straight out of the shop now, so it's a different experience. We're here, we're here to say something. We're here to do something. And for a few hours every night, we'll open our doors and you can experience that. What's next is, is, is Test Kitchen Tuesday tomorrow. That's what's next. And then after that, it's a fully booked Wednesday. So that's what's next for me. I'm living in the moment here. <laughs>